Hey everybody, Wichita here, uh, back with another video. I wanted to talk today about the uh, elections that we had, and as uh, most of you already know, uh, Democrats have taken back the House. Um, Republicans have retained the Senate and increased the majority a little bit. Um, and you know, in my opinion, I I think this is a good thing. Split government's usually a good thing. Um, losing, uh, give if we had to give the Democrats one, I would rather it be the House as opposed to the Senate, um, because the Senate obviously allows President Trump to. Uh, pick cabinet, secretaries, judges, Supreme Court judges, all that's done through advice and consent through the Senate. And uh, I think that is uh, much more important than holding the purse. Um, plus this way, I think, uh, at least on the House side, it forces Democrats to the table, they now share a responsibility uh, in governing and actually governing rather than just sitting back and complaining, obstructing. Yeah, there's probably going to be a few uh, of the crazy ones doing the investigations, and but I think uh, if Pelosi is able to m reclaim the gavel, and her speakership and are able to at least control her caucus, I think it won't be too bad. Um, plus, uh, I mean, it is just the House. I mean, you've seen the House under Republican control. They've been issuing subpoena after subpoena after subpoena. And people like Rod Rosenstein and others, they Hey, they don't, they don't care, because the uh, the House has no uh, enforcement power. You know, Congress has no enforcement power. They can subpoena all you want. They can hold you in contempt, but they have no, uh, they have no enforcement power. So if they want to subpoena his records, or I think uh, he'll be able to just say no. <laughs> but uh, I'm not sure. I'm not a constitutional law lawyer. Well, I'm not a lawyer of any kind, but um, um, but if she is able to uh, control her caucus, because she's, you know, she's been waiting a long time to reclaim the gavel, and she's not going to want to just give it up in two years. I mean, she may have to anyways, because Trump will be r running and, and, and it's a lot easier to pick up House and Senate seats when the president is on the ticket um, because more people tend to vote. And when they do vote, they tend to vote straight down the party line. Um, but she is going to want to have something to campaign on. She's going to want some her caucus to have something to campaign on. So I believe she will make, she will try to keep her caucus on a short lease as far as the investigations. Um, but as far as legislation, I think, uh, I think we'll see a DACA deal. I think we'll see a border wall, healthcare. She's gonna want to make some really big legislative actions so that her party can run on that in two years and say, okay, yeah, I know you're going to reelect Donald Trump, but look how good we're doing in the House. You know, aren't you proud of us? Um, and if she does that, that's great. That's uh, keep the House, as far as I'm concerned, because this is how uh, our government is supposed to work. You're supposed to be in opposition yet work together. That's why Americans like a split government. Very rarely do we have um, one party controlling everything for long and uh, 
and a, a super majority is even more extremely rare and the reason for that is as we all witnessed or at least those of us that are old enough to witness to have witnessed um, the rest of you you can do your homework but look what happened uh, look what happens every time there's a super majority which I think for the Democrats I think uh, I think Barack Obama was the only time they had a supermajority. The Republicans have had a supermajority before. Um, but look, look what happens when one party has unchecked power. They go nuts. And when you have a filibuster-proof Senate, meaning 60 votes or more, man, look, what, look what they did in... That's why, uh, come 2010, they stripped, stripped that power from them quick. Um, so this split government, I know everybody's. I, I don't, I don't see a problem with it as long as uh, I, I really believe. I mean, if she's got the power, it's looking like she may not even have the power. She may, you know, she is. Uh, she may go the way of the dinosaurs. I mean, uh, there's a lot of young blood in there. I mean, she is not universally liked. I think the only thing she has going for her is that she is universally feared, because that woman can pull some money. She can can or uh, raise some money. How she's able to pull that or raise that kind of money, I don't know, but. Uh, she sure is and uh, damn what else was I going to talk about uh, speaking of unchecked power um, as most of you already know uh, Jeff Sessions has uh, resigned slash got fired, however you want to look at it. He uh, resigned at the president's request, and uh, the president has nom or, uh, placed uh, his chief of staff, Whitaker, in, um, as acting attorney general. And I believe he's basically the attorney general, um, but as acting, I don't think he has the power to sign FISA warrants. I think that's, uh, there might be a few other things, but I, I know that's the biggest thing, is he's unable to sign FISA, he doesn't have the authority to sign FISA warrants. Um, and people like Chuck Schumer come out and are already, amongst others, um, are already saying he has to recuse himself and they want to introduce legislation saying basically saying that nothing and no one can interfere with Robert Mueller's investigation. Now that is so idiotic and irresponsible. First of all, the president could have fired the man at any point. Could have fired him yesterday like he did Jeff Sessions because what are you going to do? but he didn't. So there's no indication that he's going to fire him. Second, why would you give an, a, a, a special prosecutor who has not one, but two grand juries at his disposal, unrestricted access to the country with nobody controlling him? Why would he ever stop? How could he ever stop? Every investigation, every tip is going to lead to something else. Before you know it, he's investigating President Trump, personal finances of Trump Tower because a water pipe busted and flooded the streets and caused damage to the subway system. Now, could that have been some kind of malicious act on his part to save money on building the building? We should investigate that. 
And not because he wants to put anybody in jail for it, but because he likes his $10,000 a month paycheck. Does anybody, you know, so if there's nobody to tell him you're done, I could, you know, I could easily come up with all kinds of things to continue my investigation if I was getting paid $10,000 a month. Why wouldn't you? If even, if, especially if you're not doing any real harm, because in your mind, I'm not really going to indict anybody. There is no crimes here, but I'm just going to keep investigating stuff and let one take me to two, take me to three, take me to four, take me to five, and so on. Because what's Bob Mueller going to do after this? He has no prospects. Become some pundit on CNN? Yes. Lunch is ready. Okay. So why would he just stop? I mean, it makes no sense. Um, you can't just, no prosecutor in the entire country has unfeathered authority to, to investigate whatever he wants. This just is so irresponsible and so Chuck Schumer-ish to say something so stupid. I mean, that man, that man's an idiot. I mean, there are so many idiots, we all know that, but Come on, that's just, that didn't even pass the laugh test. All right, I'm going to get off here and go eat my lunch. Um, when I'm on my way to work, I'm going to do, uh, we'll uh, discuss uh, Jim Acosta, or as some people are saying, Jim Acosta. <laughs> and that freaking idiot. All right. Thanks for watching. Uh, you've been watching The Wichitan. Please like and share. And, uh, I'll get back at you with some more. Bye.